Blog Show. Blog Show. Welcome to Blog Show, your weekly march across the front lines of the sports blogosphere. I'm your rifle, Jamie Montrum. This is your gun, Dan Steinberg. And I guess that kind of plays into my belief that eventually we will both get fired. <laughs> Anyhow, we're going to take you on our weekly trip through the underbelly of the sports blogging world. Every time we ring the bell, a blogger hits his or her mark and gets his or her wings. It's going to get seedy in the underbelly here on awesome. Blog Show. And we thought we had a major milestone last week with Blog Show number 10, Blog Show X, but that was nothing compared to this week. Our friends at Rumor and Rumors and Rants, a sports blog, started the very own Blog Show drinking game because every successful TV show needs one let's face it the only thing better than alcohol and sports is alcohol sports and blogging they Seriously. laid out all the rules and uh, here are a few of them take a sip if a blogger gets his or her wings via a ding take a sip if Jamie looks down at his cards or paper <laughs> take a sip if Dan swings and misses badly on a one-liner I was totally insulted bringing by that. the show to a screeching halt totally insulted by that and I guess there's there's some some ticks of ours that also would cause our viewers to have to take a chug mm -hmm. and that, that would be if I actually nail a one-liner which apparently doesn't happen very frequently if one of my jokes soars right over your head or if we mention Kwame Brown let's get the party started the story of the week was Kobe Bryant demanding to be traded out of LA then backing off those demands a little bit it's been covered exhaustively in the mainstream media but here's what what bloggers did with the story first up our friend at pile of list he's making a movie called kill bus and he's casting all the characters. Kobe will be played by Omar Epps, Phil Jackson by Billy Bob Thornton, Jerry Buss by Jerry Stiller. There's a remarkable similarity there, I think. I mean, it's uncanny. Yes. Uh, Kobe's wife, Vanessa, by Eva Longoria. I don't know what Tony, Tony Parker would say about that. And then also Jerry West, an integral character in this film, played by uh, lookalike Dennis Quaid. And I, I did want to Randy Quaid. Randy so. Quaid. And I did, I did want to point out, actually, that I got a random email from a reader this week that was kind of uh, suggesting that I look like the deputy NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, the guy who opened the envelopes. Yeah, he, he just took over the, the emceeing at the draft. Yeah, what do you think? He's a formative figure. Well, a bit. same haircut, yeah, mostly. All right, well, moving on, a lot of the story that was, uh, you know, has developed this week uh, about Kobe Bryant was broken on his blog. He's got a ghostwriter, I think, because it actually is very well written. Not saying Kobe's unintelligent, he speaks more languages than I do. But another guy who's got a blog who's emerging into the NBA is Greg Oden over on yardbarker.com. Greg Oden has started his own blog, and we are the postman noticed that uh, he doesn't write so well. He's not much of a blogger. I guess. I wanted to say something about Kobe's blog, first of all. Oh, please. Remember Kobe demanded to be traded, and then he sort of backtracked off that demand? It was like two days ago. Yeah, but, but the, the blog continued to maintain that he wanted to be traded. It was kind of, <laughs> I mean, Kobe, if you're a blogger, you've got to update it. He keeps saying, the more I thought about the future, the more I became convinced that the Lakers and me just have two different visions for the future. But this remained on his blog even after he'd stopped demanding to be traded. Well, he or his ghostwriter. He or his Kobe ghostwriter. needs to learn that frequency is king. Take, take, uh, follow in the footsteps of Gilbert Arenas and his blog. But I like Greg Oden's blog. It's the blog of, you know, a 19-year-old kid. He's talking right. about how cool it is to wear suits that actually fit yes. and visiting the Nike campus and everybody's wearing an Ohio State t-shirt right. in his honor. But I want to give him a tip. You know, if he's going to blog like bring the goods you know show those photos of yourself partying right. like the one that disseminated not so long ago that's a nice photo but I will say that there wasn't very many there, like you said there weren't very many punctuation marks in his blog it seemed like there were fewer periods than a postmenopausal woman would have and I, I just would like to you know you still have to keep keep a kind of G general writing standards going, Greg. I think our audience should drink because I didn't get whatever joke it was <laughs> Period, uh, you post just made. Apostle, no. Elsewhere in the blogosphere about Greg Oden, <laughs> moving on seamlessly, <laughs> is uh, losers with loser with socks. It asks the question, where did Greg Oden come from? And he poses the uh, theory that it was a romantic evening between Walter Matthau, LeBron James, and Andre the Giant. Yeah, and I would like to point out that this is this was as part of a list for the ugliest number one draft pick of all time. Oh, well. And one of and one of the nominees was actually Kwame Brown, who. And chug up there. Kwame's maybe not particularly ugly, but but Loser with Socks said that he's really ugly on the inside. Well, thank you, Loser with Socks. Take a drink for a ding and take another drink because we're going to show you a video that involves mascots. Extra bases. Send the runner. Love the Giants. Old school. Kick it. And that mascot video is courtesy of our friends at Fanhouse. Drink once for the ding and twice for us mentioning Fanhouse yet again. And I'd like to say, as I do every time we show dancing mascots here on Blog Show, the, those pelvic thrusts were particularly impressive and, and once again reminiscent of Screech, the eagle slash chicken mascot of the Washington Nationals, who incidentally I just heard on the radio can be rented out for parties. You're well familiar with that dance move, the Screech pelvic thrust. Yeah. Uh, speaking of mascots getting their groove on, Mr. Met was out on the town in New York, uh, right. Deadspin.com, had the photos. I guess you can, he can be rented for, for parties. That's right. Uh, and, and, you know, you think it would be for a kid's party, but no, these are, you know, of age men and women out at the bar. And did you look at the, like, the full, the full complement of photos? There was Mr. Met getting his caricature drawn, which was really nice. Mr. Met kind of 
schmoozing with the ladies. I completely expect that next week we'll see Mr. Met showing up at a Toronto hotel with a busty blonde by his side. Hey, Mr. Met kind of creeps me out. Let's move on to another feel-good birthday story. Oh, you want me to talk about Karan Butler? Please. Okay, I wrote the story on the DC Sports Blog, and it's actually a bit old. It's about a month old by this point, but a 16-year-old uh, kid from Fairfax, Virginia, his, his mom kind of slipped an invitation to Karan Butler for the surprise birthday party, and Karan shows up and, you know, piles in the basement with the other teenage boys to hide out for the surprise. Well, Steins, you just talked about the Wizards, which is one of the take-a-sip rules in, in, uh, in a blog show drinking game, so take a sip. And also, you know, we've, uh, speaking of drinking, we've got some more international <laughs> video. Soccer fans. I think the point is that you might be getting sloshed at this point. If you get super sloshed, you might do what these guys do. I don't think I've ever had an experience like this in my whole life, covering matches in the World Cup, Champions League, many different leagues. Hey, Manchester! Manchester! All right. Okay, we're not going to give them their day in the sun. We saw that one via the offside.com. Excellent soccer blog. I need to read it more because I don't even know what the FA Cup is. Well, it was, it was, it's the final. It's like a cup final between Manchester United and Chelsea, kind of like an alternative to the uh, league championship. Kind of a, a big deal. Well, if any drunks, you know, do get out of the parking lot and onto the field, this is what happens to you out on the pitch. We saw this video over at whoateallthepies.tv. And I take exception to that. I mean, why not just let the guy run amok? And this, this was an Israeli soccer match, and the guy definitely clocked him with the Is knee. there no security there? It's not like there was a burglar breaking into the home, and you take, you know, this martial law breaks out. Yeah. There's no need to, you know, level the guy. I thought the fan kind of flopped a little bit, frankly. <laughs> well, speaking of flopping and the epidemic of flopping in the world of soccer, it's crossed over into the world of basketball, especially with Argentinian Manu Ginobili, right. uh, you know, putting his flop on in the Western Conference playoffs. Yep. Uh, our friends at Basketball Full un unveiled a video of some fans emulating Manu's signature move. Yes. That's, some of these are just great. The exaggerated, backstepping, you know, flailing arms. Right. It's very awesome. Actually, do you play poker at all, Jamie? Not a bit. No. I was just going to Was that going anywhere? Yeah, I was going to ask if you know what a Vladi Dibach is. <laughs> it's a flop. It's when you, when you flop a king playing poker. Okay, thanks yeah. a lot for the education, uh -huh. Steins. And uh, this isn't the first incident of, or instance of Spurs, you know, flopping or crying or whining to the officials. Last year's playoffs, the association blog she posted all the photos of Tim Duncan and Ginobili and Parker right. whining to the referees. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, excessive. This is the downfall of the NBA, these Spurs. They whine, they flop. People hate them. All right, well, hopefully you're nice and sloshed by this point. It is Friday night, unless, again, you're all watching on the YouTubes. At that point, you're probably drinking and very depressed by now. But let's take it down a notch. Steins, we're going to take that baseline for a stroll. The Big Lead ran into some issues this week. TheBigLead.com. He posted the uh, Brady Quinn, A.J. Hawk wedding photos. They didn't right. get married together. It was A.J. Hawk marrying Brady Quinn's sister. But Brady Quinn showed up in the uh, Macho Man outfit. And to be fair, the photographer actually posted them on the website. The big lead mer merely borrowed them for a few minutes. I was glad this whole kind of case developed, though, because, you know, the, the lawyer sent the threatening note to the big lead, please take down these photos. And I got to learn about the U.S. US uh, <laughs> title, Title 17, Chapter 501 and 502. Copyright infringement. I had no idea. Live it. Yeah. Learn it. That's right. Well, our next topic is along the lines with this same story. Earlier this month, WithLeather.com sparked a case of internet celebrity by posting a photo of an 18-year-old pole vaulting champion from California by the name of Allison Stokey. Just weeks later, the, later, the internet phenomenon crossed over in the mainstream and ended up on the front page of the Washington Post. Joining us now to talk about it is the editor of WithLeather.com, Matt Ufford. And Matt, what do you think of the Washington Post and Fox News' portrayal of Allison Stokey and her family as being victimized by you know, your posting on With Leather and other bloggers posting her photo across the web? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I, it's not like I'm. It's not like I go online every day looking to. to who else can I victimize today? That's that's not the case at all. Like I've got, uh, I've got readers who um, who are interested in, in attractive women, who are in, interested in sports, and who are interested in uh, uh, a tongue-in-cheek take on uh, on the sports world that, that has a little bit of a, a negative bent sometimes. And. Um, I, I, I hope she's able to, to, to make it a positive thing for her. Like, I, I don't wish her any will, and, and uh, I, could, I, I really hope that she's not the victim in this case, because that's not the intent. Hey, Matt, I think that Jamie and I probably understand a little bit about what you do, seeing, seeing as how we reside in the seedy underbelly of sports blogging ourselves. But I guess I'm curious, after you kind of read the story and after you saw that she really didn't like the attention that much, why you decided to go ahead and post a second batch of, of photos and another post about the topic? That's um, that's a good question, Dan. The um, I got back from um, uh, from my parents on, on Fox News uh, yesterday afternoon, and uh, I'd gotten several emails, uh, among them being from the photographer who was unhappy with the Stokey family, and that they were saying they didn't want attention, and yet they uh, seemed to be currying uh, uh, favor through the media. 
and uh, he was upset about it. And I also realized the first post that I written was just kind of jokey, and uh, it had gotten a lot of attention. I hadn't had the opportunity um, on television or even on my own on my own site to express my honest opinion about it. And the point of that post, really more so than the pictures, although that was. Uh, those all all five of those pictures that I posted uh, were of her pole vaulting. It's an athlete doing her sport uh, when you strip it all away, and that's I don't think there's anything. A there's, there's nothing wrong with that, and uh, B it gave me a chance to be honest. Like let's celebrate her athleticism, let's celebrate her beauty, and uh, it's it's not a bad thing. You know she's a public figure now, and let's go ahead and move forward with this. Well said, Matt. Thanks for joining us. We'll be reading it with leather.com, and I gotta compliment you. That is a damn fine T-shirt, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, and I can't see you guys, but I'm, I'm betting you guys represent it as well. Have uh, a good one. Highly fashionable. Thanks a lot, Matt. And you know, Dan, I don't think there's anything wrong in you know objectifying attractive you know men or women that are in the public eye for whatever reason. But usually, you know, whether they're exceptional or outstanding at one thing or another, I think that's human nature, and it's it's timeless. So you're saying that viewers can objectify us if they want. <laughs> I'd be more than happy if they would objectify us. Maybe we should lose these waffle shirts and go like Matt did, show off a little forearm, a little gun. Maybe so. But until then, we're going to continue objectifying cheese on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about my artisanal cheese. <laughs> transition gets a day. My artisanal cheese of the week. We talked a lot about the Spurs. This is a cheese that comes from Dallas. It's from Texas, but it's from Dallas. And I think that Dallas people probably would be a little bit hostile towards the Spurs with us. This is called Festivo, Mont Montasio Festivo, excuse me. It's from the mozzarella company. I talked to Paula Lambert. She makes this cheese, and it's actually a cow's milk cheese that is rubbed with an ancho chili and olive oil paste to give it a little bit of a spicy kick. Good things do Just come like from Texas. Heads. And, well, I mentioned earlier, last week was Blog Show 10. Uh, this week, Blog Show 11, we finally have an email address. So if you have feedback for us here on this cutting-edge interactive sporting program, just send an email to blogshow at comcastsportsnet.com. And hopefully you still know how to operate a computer net by now. You're probably a little buzzed. I mean, I did, I did the math. The average blog show brings you like 93 sips and four chugs. Yeah. Thank goodness it's a Friday night. Before you go, drink one more time because it's an international video for the YouTube clip of the week via the new site Das Fanhaus. It is ping pong rapping. <laughs> Blog show wardrobe provided by nomas.com and dcsportsfan.com.